<coughs> All right. Uh, today we're going to get into subnetting, and uh, we're going to subnet a Class B range today. All right. We have our uh, subnetting steps in front of us. Um, In a previous session, we we did traditional subnetting, and also we did uh, variable length subnet mask. In traditional subnetting, the focus is on borrowing n bits, right? You know, note that the formula is two n. Again, the focus is network bits. But when we get into variable and sub that mask, we saw that the focus shifted from the network bits in the formula to host bits, right? Okay. All right. Um, today, when we do our subnetting, it's going to be traditional subnetting. So the focus will be network bit. Okay. All right. Let's let's imagine that. Our ISP has given us this base network, 150.23.0.0. Okay, it's a class B, so by default it's going to be a slash 16, right? How many host addresses are available on a class B network? How many host addresses? What's the formula? Two to however many host bits are available, power minus two, right? So in this instance, it'll be two to the 16th power minus two. And that'll give us what value? Two to the 16th power. Over 65,000 host address. So it's safe to say that your, um, tr your run of the mill organization isn't large enough to be granted a class B. Um, base network address, right? Okay. But let's imagine that we are part of one of those organizations that requires such address space, okay? And this particular organization needs 500 networks. So basically, the organization is going to have to subnet this base network, which is 150.23.0.0 into a manner that it can have at least 500 networks, okay? Let's go back to the uh, subnet steps. It says determine the required networks. The required networks, 500, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then step two, determine the least n value of the 2n formula. What goes there? Can we use 2 to the 6th power? That's 64. Excuse me? 2 to the 16th? How many networks do we need? 500. And what? And we just said 2 to the 16th is 65,000. Wouldn't that be like a waste? So we don't want to use 2 to the 16th. Okay. Okay, you, you can't use 8 bits, so 2 to the 8th power will give us 250 and some change, right? Okay, so what what could we use that's not too much? Okay, 2 to what power will complete the requirement? Okay, um, Will says 9. Okay, what's 2 to the 9th power? 512, and what's the requirement? 500. So 2 to the ninth power would work. All right? Okay, step three, it says n equals the amount of host bits to borrow. So we'll go back to our um, chart. All right? Mm -hmm. That's right. We're going to isolate or demark those bits now. What's that? Okay. And okay. All right. Um, 
we're, we really don't need to um, do anything with the first octet and the second octet because we know the 150 and the 23 will stay the same, all right? However, we do need to borrow at least nine post bits. So we start borrowing at the first available octet, which will be this third octet, right? We start counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We need nine bits, right? So we know we're going to use all eight of these. So I'll go ahead and, and isolate them or demark them. All right, we need nine bits, so we also need to use this bit. That'll be nine. All right, let's go back to our uh, steps. It says calculate the new subnet mask. The new subnet mask is what? We've gone from a slash 16 to a. Slash 25? How did you get 25, Roy? Right, exactly, because we started with using 16 network bits, and then we expanded the network bits from 16 to 9 more. So that will be 20, 25. Okay? All right. This is the same process we've, we've been going through. It's just we've, we've just changed the variables a little bit. Okay? All right. Now let's go ahead and compute the uh, network address, the first network address. That's going to be 150.23.0.0. Mm -hmm. How do you get 0, 0? Range is given is 150.23.0.0.16. So it's going to be the very, very first one. Okay. All right. Well, we know 150 and 23 are going to be the same throughout this process. Then we have to look at the rest of the row of the other octets. And looking at the octets as is, the value will be zero because we're not using any of those bits. There are no ones there, right? Okay. Okay, now let's compute the broadcast address. How do we compute the broadcast address? Don't you put a one on the one that was there? I like that. Where do we put the ones? The ones go in all the host bits. Okay. All the host bits. All right. And the broadcast address for this network is 15023. What's the value of the third octet? Zero. There are no ones. And then what's the value of the fourth octet? 127. Okay. All right. We've completed uh, one, one subnet. Let's go to the next subnet. All right. Okay. We need to, com to com uh, figure out the uh, network address. We know it's going to start with 150.23. Now we have to re recall what we did in previous sessions. We have to deal with the value or, or the least uh, combination in terms of bits and the borrowed um, network bit portion. Okay, the least combination of bits. We we just used all zeros in the third octet and one zero in that one network bit in the fourth octet. What will be the next greater combination without skipping? What is it? <clears throat> Using the 128 bit? Okay. Yep. Okay, and then the rest of the bits from this point left would be zeros. 
Okay. So the network address in this instance will be 150.23.0.128. How do we fact? How do we uh, compute the broadcast? Turn on all the host bits. And the broadcast address is 255. Mm -hmm. And it's, again, it's a slash 25. All right, now this is where it gets a little tricky. We've maxed out the fourth octet. So now we have to reach over into the third octet. So we'll start with uh, 150. Dot twenty three dot zero dot twenty eight. 